right, first of all, what in the world is this thing? Well, it's a uh, army generator manufactured in 1967 and commissioned by the army in 1968. It's a uh, two-cylinder gasoline engine overhead valve. Uh, I believe it's three horsepower. Air-cooled, uh, magneto energized, no battery. Um, the generator puts out supposedly 1,500 watts. This one's pretty cool because all the data plates are still present. So I was able to look up a lot you know with the serial numbers and the model number and a data plate there for the fuel shutoff valve and another plate there for the instructions for starting the motor and operating the generator there's another data plate right there so let's go over the components real quick i'm not going to get into this box right now i'm going to save this for the end but this is simply an on-off switch to turn the uh, generator electricity on. And this dial apparently goes from a minimum uh, output to maximum. Uh, this is a voltmeter, AC. And this meter says cycles per second. Coming around here, that's the fuel tank right here. I haven't looked in there yet, so we'll do that in a minute. It's difficult to look down inside the fuel tank because it's got a uh, sort of a horizontal baffle about halfway down and uh, you can't see the bottom of the tank. But I was able to get the camera scope down there. The fuel is routed out of the bottom of the tank and I think this is the pump right here. A little sediment bowl, on off valve for the gas. This here is an auxiliary gas input. Uh, over here is the air filter assembly. And this little deal on the end is an air filter indicator. And it's supposedly it turns red or something changes in it when the filter becomes restricted and lets you know visually. This is of course the carburetor. Down here, I did look under this cover uh, right after I bought it and that's where the points and condenser are But I have not even taken the cover off. I just sort of peeked in there This line up top going to the top of the engine must be some kind of a crankcase breather At least that's my guess at this point These are the valve covers again, it's a two-cylinder and these are the spark plugs with the heavy-duty fittings on them, I guess, to protect them from the elements. This is actually steel braided line underneath rubber. So again, this is a military army unit. You know, it's sort of intentionally overbuilt so it can withstand use and abuse in the field and uh, minimize breakdowns for the guys that are trying to use them. The switch here on off is for the uh, spark for the engine. And that's a nice location for that switch, I think. Easy to get to. This right here is the carburetor throttle. So that's uh, idle. You can tell this is the idle position because this is the set screw for the idle. That's the rest. This here is the choke. I think that uh, there's an arrow that goes, that sweeps up that way. So that must be on, that must be off. And I think I skipped over this guy right here. This is the uh, crankcase oil dipstick. Well, it's got oil. It's up to the full mark. And the oil looks pretty darn good. So that's a good sign. So in the in case of a, a bunker or any kind of enclosure with the sandbags like here in the photo, they definitely need to route the exhaust out of their enclosure so they don't sit there and asphyxiate on carbon monoxide. Okay, I think the next thing to inspect are the spark plugs and cylinders. And if everything looks good, we'll throw some uh, fuel down there and see if it'll pop off. 
and we'll go from there. I don't think these have been off in a long time. They must have had a special tool for that, I don't know. Let's unscrew this all the way. Okay. I thought this part was just, right here was just an extension to the plug, but it's actually part of the plug itself. So, hopefully these things still work. I mean, you could, I guess, convert them over to regular plugs, but it's kind of neat to have the army plugs in here. Well, those plugs look pretty good to me. Now this one's dirty. This one's clean, and this one's dirty. Hmm, that might not be a good sign. All right, now I'm gonna to try to check for spark. See if I can do this without shocking myself. That one has spark. Two for two. Two for two. Good news. Tight enough for a test run, I think. Just give it a little bit of throttle. I'll try a pull start first, and then if I don't get a pop, maybe we'll try the drill. All right, here we go. All right, we gotta do that one more time. I think we lost spark. There's two sets of points in there. First, we'll see if they open and close. Yeah, they're opening and closing. Now we'll actually look for spark. Okay. I see weak spark on the top and no spark on the bottom. I think there's your problem. All right, the points are clean. And uh, see if that did anything. So after cleaning the points and uh, hearing it run for the second time, I think it was only running on one cylinder the first time. Here's what it sounded like before. And here's what it sounds like now. for today.